How did you meet? I met Johan at the Rex Hotel. Uh, that was one of the very few gay uh, venues uh, in Sydney in 1969. He came in at about um, quarter to nine and uh, the relationship that was made that night lasted from that moment on really and uh, it's still going strong. I want to talk about your life together, but I'm really interested in, in what it was to be a boy from the age of 11, realising that you're attracted to your own gender in Menzies, Australia, in 1950s Australia, through your well, teenage Well, there was years. a deal, you see. The deal was if you keep very quiet and if you are very ashamed of yourself and if you don't put your head above the parapet, we'll leave you alone. If you uh, are ashamed... Never, never mention it. Please do not make us think about the fact that there are gay people out there. So um, this is this was the reality of that time. And actually, um, one day there'll be a museum in Australia, in Sydney, uh, to explain to people, because young people, they just don't understand. Young people today wonder what on earth uh, got into people that they could be so irrational uh, it was unscientific, it was demonstrated to be uh, completely unsupported by science, but it was supported by a very narrow interpretation of a few religious passages and it was certainly supported by the criminal law. And pure prejudice and fear, which I can recall through as a young man growing up, you know, there was a fear of homosexuality as if it was something catching and that it was something threatening. Yes, and there was also um, political mileage to be made in pandering to that fear and there were promotions and police um, careers to be made. The commissioner for police, who was Mr Delaney, Colin Delaney, um, in the 1960s, he said this was the biggest problem in Australia and even bigger than communism. And so this was a, a big uh, issue in some people's minds. But eventually, by slow steps, uh, it was removed. And it, it was removed by uh, the protests of gay people, but also, it has to be said, by um, straight people, either because of their families or because of their knowledge of the science and because of the fact that they thought this just isn't fair. And the straight people were in both of the major political groupings but mainly on the Labor side and eventually the laws started to change, starting in South Australia. Growing up, did you fear violence? Not really. No, I played by the deal. If you, if you don't um, trouble us with thinking about you... And if you pretend, then we'll leave you alone. But you, you weren't a shrinking violet on any level. You went into university and you were prominent in university life. You were the president of the Student Representative Council. You were the head of the University of Sydney Union. You were living a, uh, a life that was gathering attention to yourself. You are obviously a brilliant young man. In that time, did you have to still sustain your part of the deal? Yes, uh, and in fact I now know that quite a few of the people who were in student politics were gay, but uh, they were playing by the deal and uh, they would pretend that they were straight. I never really had people um, pretending that they were my girlfriend. I had female friends and still have, but I didn't, didn't uh, do the whole thing. Uh, I just had... Uh, my own life, and I became the chair of so many committees. That was the way I solved the problem. I was the chair of so many university committees. I got onto the Senate of the university, and that was the beginning of that sort of connection. Um, and that's what you did. You sort of sublimated. It was a very, very lonely life. And as I look back on it, I'm really resentful of what happened. But boy, I had good luck. First of all, with my Spanish partner uh, and then with uh, my Netherlands partner. What has he brought to your life? <clears throat> uh, well, he's brought uh, love, support and total searing honesty. 
the people of the Netherlands, many people find them uh, very brutal and very stubborn, and they are, but they have this national culture which really rejects the Anglo-Celtic politeness. They do not, when I would sometimes say in the High Court when he was being very direct with my colleagues, I would say, couldn't you have, couldn't you have said that slightly differently? And he said, no, no, you, you Anglos, you're so nice to people's face and you are then stabbing them in the back uh, when they've gone. But we believe in being open and honest and uh, and that really rubbed off onto the whole Kirby family. We're all now rather Netherlands and, and people have to just get used to it. The Dutchification of the Kirby family. Who proposed to whom? It was a matter of mutual decision. We were rather sceptical about getting married. As quite a few people have said to us, after 50 years, why would you bother... And we didn't want to say that in any way our our long relationship was second class. But um, the advent of the 50th anniversary was just too romantic for us to let go. And so it's going to be um, a marriage and uh, that will be done uh, with a completely civil ceremony because my partner doesn't go along with any religion. Although you do. Yes, but that's one of the constructive differences <laughs> that we've had during our 50 years together. Some of your friends, as I understand it, have got married and found it didn't work for them. Some have even decided to get divorced. Well, that, that's true. In fact, that was a, a matter that <coughs> held us back. When gays started to get married, they started to fall out and act just like straights. It was really <laughs> a, a, big, uh, a big worry and... Um, We weighed up every possibility and then we've decided to to take the plunge. I think it's pretty safe after 50 years and with a a strong love which has been tested not just in good times but in some pretty nasty and bad times and we'll be using, though I don't know that I've told Johan this, substantially the old language of the Book of Common Prayer but there'll be no reference to obey. Uh, it'll just be uh, to love and to cherish. That is what we've done for 50 years and that is what we'll go on doing after we're married. Well, we wish you, as I'm sure all our listeners wish you a long and happy, uh, healthy married life. Your song for the year that made you, 1969, the year you met Johan, is, well, tell me what it is. It's uh, from uh, Hair, the the musical, which we saw just a few weeks after we met. It was then running in the Minerva in King's Cross, just opposite the Rex Hotel, Uh, and uh, it had that wonderful song, uh, The Age of Aquarius, uh, accompanied uh, at the end by the nude dancing on stage, which was mildly shocking to everybody at the time. Uh, pretty tame by today's standards, but uh, it let, it's the call to let the sunshine in and that is what we wanted to see and I hope that our lives have brought some of the sunshine in, just a few rays. Michael Kirby, how delightful to have you with us and we wish you all the best for tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>